What's up guys, Mindless again. Wanted to share a couple more pieces out of my collection. Uh, forgive me for last week not posting a video. I was out of town um, in Austin, Texas for the F1 race. And uh, I'm back, so back on a regular schedule. I'll try my best to stick to Saturdays. And today I wanted to share uh, a model that I've been kind of obsessed with since uh, Blade Show 2015 back in June. And uh, was relatively difficult to acquire. It seems like those who were lucky enough to score one at Blade have held on to them. And, I, and now that I have a couple, I totally understand. So what we're looking at here is uh, a piece from uh, Jerry McGinnis and uh, Jeremy Horton. And it's called the Shody 45. And what really started my hunt for these was uh, I've been on this tear. Those who know me know I've been looking for all these bronze bladed pieces uh, that uh, came out of the West Tennessee Knife Maker Association. They kind of did a uh, possum. They did a phase, this piece, a couple FTRs. Um, I know there's a Leviathan. There were a few pieces that came out, and what they did was, uh, with the magic of, uh, I think, a secondary heat treat, they were able to get the bronze-colored blade. And this was a piece that I was looking for to, to complete that collection, and when I do complete it, I will definitely put a video out showing all the pieces together. But I was able to score the, the bronze blade from a fellow collector, uh, and... You know, the word was out that I was looking for these pieces, and this piece came up. And um, rather than just passing on it, since I had two, I just couldn't help myself, and I had to grab the other one as well. And it's a relatively small knife, uh, not normally my style, but I think there's a, like kind of a movement in the knife collecting game, or the tastes of knife collectors are kind of changing slightly. It's not to say that big knives aren't cool, but. I'm noticing that a lot of makers are, are moving to these slightly smaller blades, and by no means is, is this a very extremely small knife. What you're looking at is, on both of these pieces, a three inch total blade length. The cutting edge is about two and three quarter inches, and the overall length is seven inches. So it's not tiny, but it carries really, really well. And as I, once I scored this bronze one, um, I was kind of hesitant to carry it because it's just a rarer piece. But once I, got, I was able to score this piece, the regular, it's a bronze titanium handle with just a regular steel colored blade, I began to carry it regularly. And this, this piece belonged to a fellow collector that um, I ended up getting it through Recon One. Uh, this other piece was out of a private collection, so I was able to trade my way into this piece. It actually, the trade was... Um, one of my uh, Horton Stout possums, and I believe another piece. It's just so rare to find the bronze one that I would basically, I wanted it bad enough to get rid of it. And I know I, trade value wise, I came out maybe a little under, but it's worth it to me because this is a piece I know I'm going to hold on to. And, um, you know, I saw these at Blade Show when I was there and got a chance to handle them. They were going in um, a lottery. And I, didn't, I wasn't able to grab one. And at that show, I ended up going for the uh, bronze bladed possum, which I haven't done a video on, but it's been in videos. If you look back, I have a video called, like, I don't even know what it's called. You'll see it. It's a, a pieces from all the guys from Tennessee, from Brad Blunt, Jeremy Horton, Jason Stout. And you'll see the, the gold possum. Neither of these pieces were in my possession at the time of that video. And now I have both. I, I, I don't know why, but... I mean, I actually do know why. They're freaking awesome, guys. These knives carry so well. You could see, um, clearly, you could see the grind coming out of uh, Jeremy Horton's shop. Platinum grind. Effectively, it's a chisel grind. And um, people are referring it to the, as the Horton grind. And it definitely has his look. It's got that very highly polished tip wickedly sharp and and to be honest when I first started collecting pieces from uh, Jeremy Horton I wasn't the biggest fan of chisel grinds but in real world use I mean these things are straight up razor blades they're freaking amazing and now that I have two I'm willing to use this one this one came out from a pretty high profile collector as well I didn't clear it with him to say his name but I'm sure 
If you look on Instagram, you'll see it. So there are carry marks. You can tell this was lovingly carried and used. So to me, I will continue on that path and continue to use it. Um, just an overall great piece. Flipper, frame lock, very simple, uh, bent spring clip. It's just extremely simple, but such a good piece to carry. As far as EDC, honestly, my tastes are moving towards these slightly smaller knives. They're easier to pocket. I think it's because we're coming out of summer and I was wearing a lot of shorts. As winter comes around, you know, I think I'll have more pocket to carry, you know, four inch blades and stuff. But I had to share this with you guys. It's, it's um, a very, very popular knife. The shorty originally was made by uh, by Jeremy Horton and when the collaboration between uh, McGinnis and Horton came out with this particular piece and it is just freaking badass flips amazingly well action is great nice free falling blade centering not so important since it's a chisel grind but if you take a look at the tolerances very very well made this knife is made by Jerry McGinnis and then the blade is ground and finished by uh, Jeremy Horton and it's just stunning honestly I know it as far as like aesthetics or level of exotic materials it's, that doesn't compare to these like full time Ascus pieces that I put on these videos but to me this is just as much a unicorn as those pieces they are extremely difficult to find and there's um, a big group of us collectors that kind of go bananas over uh, pieces coming, you know, anything basically ground by Jeremy Horton or made coming out of Tennessee. And then once you get the McGinnis bug, it's pretty much game over. It's so strange how it takes time to develop uh, an appreciation for uh, McGinnis's knives because they're very organic looking. But once you catch the bug, it is probably one of the most addictive things out there. And, I, you know, I, I wanted to keep to, to rare uh, collectible pieces on my channel, and this definitely falls in that bucket. So, again, look at them compared to each other. You can really see the bronze blade. I don't know if it's showing up well in video, but if you take a look, you can kind of see the difference there. These are actually flip-flops, so bronze on the handle, like a steel color, bronze on the blade, steel color back here, but they're obviously full titanium frame locks. Beautifully done. And in the typical um, McGinnis fashion, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this with the lighting. Let's see if we can get this to focus. He marks each blade inside the steel, um, the month, the year. You can see Horton's name there and McGinnis's name. Forgive me, I, I should have bought a flashlight. But basically, on um, McGinnis Customs, he marks the inside of the handles and tells you exactly what's going on with the knife, when it was made, uh, what number in the series it was made. This is a, a, a limited run of these and, and to be honest with you I don't know I've heard like so many different numbers of how many are in circulation um, a few of them are the bronze bladed variants uh, the majority are this steel variant but it is just such a good carryable piece that um, you know I wanted to make sure you guys got a chance to look at it up close and personal just a gorgeous gorgeous knife absolutely beautiful and the simplicity is i think what what pushes it over the edge for a lot of collectors you know i think if you go way back in my videos and you'll see my first uh one of my first videos actually was on my the first um jbb knives arrestor that i had it's all stonewash and i mentioned that personally to me in my opinion the hardest thing to do is execute perfectly when you have nothing to hide behind in terms of exotic materials. You know, if this handle was all Mokotai or Timascus and the blade was Damascus, it actually, when you use those pieces, because of the complexity of the pattern on the, on the materials, it hides a lot of imperfections. When you are only using, you know, titanium or steel, you cannot hide those imperfections. And that's where Jerry McGinnis really takes it to the next level. I mean, there's no arguing. He's kind of like a child prodigy. He's been making knives since he was a teenager and had success pretty much immediately. So it is, it's just really an honor to have one of these pieces and to have a collaboration between him and 
Jeremy Horton to me is is top level as it gets. Uh, a couple of people have asked me showing them like why is there like kind of like a double choil? It's not really like that. It's one choil and that's a little cut out for when you're sharpening the blade. And to be honest with you, I haven't this bronze one, to be honest, I haven't carried. I've carried a couple times, but I've never had the need to use it. This piece, since I've had it, I've carried it quite a bit and used it quite a bit. Um, and I haven't had the need to strop it or anything. I believe the steel is 154. Let me double check. Um, it is, I think, forgive me if I'm wrong, I'll annotate it if I am. Uh, but it's such, such a razor blade. These Horton grind pieces, once you get used to that level of sharpness, that's a wrap, guys. You, you're hooked. And um, this piece doesn't let, down, let you down. And the trend in the collecting world or in the taste of collectors to go in, going to slightly smaller pieces is, is a welcome change. You know, for, I'd say, the last 18 months, you've been seeing these huge four, four and a half inch nine blades coming out. And that's fine. Um, but in real life to carry, sometimes you kind of need a slightly smaller knife. More importantly than that is if you are literally, if you're, if you're the kind of person that's going to like pull out your knife in public and use it to cut something for somebody else or whatever, this is the kind of piece that doesn't freak people out. You know, if you pull out a four and a half inch kick stop crux or some crazy knife like that, like a frame donk, people are going to, some people may take offense to that. This, never. I mean, I've shown this to a lot of non-knifey people, and they love it. The weird thing is, they, maybe I'm just so used to playing with knives. That, to me, I, I absolutely see the beauty here. To non-knifey people, it looks like a very simple knife, and that's what it is. Um, and I think that's why this is one of those pieces that is loved by pretty seasoned collectors only. Um, to me, it was surprising. A lot of people didn't even know these existed. But the guys that actually do collect, especially the guys that are into the, the Stouts and Hortons and Brad Blunt's work, they absolutely know what this piece is. And it is such a good knife. Prices on these pieces from Maker Price literally have tripled to quadrupled since Blade Show. And to me, it's worth it. You know, normally for me, I, I'm willing to, to trade into knives that are slightly higher priced only if it's a type of piece that I'm entertaining the thought of keeping forever. So a piece that will stay in my collection forever. And you'll see in my collection a lot of times duplicates of the same model, like a very dress model and then one that I can pocket or carry. Like the best examples, I just did a video on those GTC Airborns. One is a full tie mascus, ridiculous over the top piece that I shouldn't carry because of its rarity. And then I had the other one that I could carry that was lighter and whatnot. Th these two are technically the same. The only difference is the finishing on the blade on one of them is what makes it more rare. Uh, obviously there's a fuller like kind of ground into the blade and that's pretty awesome, especially when you put it next to the possum and the other pieces that have the gold blades, there's like a string of similarity that runs through all of them. So guys, I wanted you to check these things out. I'm just kind of obsessed with uh, these pieces right now. and I'm at that point where if another one popped up, I'd probably grab it, even though I shouldn't. I just dig these pieces. They're just stupid. Ridiculously sharp. Killer action. F flips, like, just super, super fun. I mean, you could, this thing is the size of the palm of your hand. Wickedly sharp. It actually, you know, I'm a large, I wear a large glove, and it, might, it actually works. My, no fingers hanging off at the back, zero hot spots. I mean, if you're into that thing, everything has been contoured and rounded. Just stunning work, stunning work. And you can actually open the knife with this uh, thumb hole, but I will hit the tripod, so I'm not even going to try to do that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And guys, forgive me for not uploading a video last weekend. I went out to the F1 race and had a blast. And, uh, I wish I could have visited some knife makers when I was in Texas, but I was there for such a short period of time. And the worst part was like, you know, we, we flew out and I didn't check any bags, so I couldn't really bring any knives with me. And I, I honestly went through a little bit of withdrawal and kept checking my pocket and looking for a knife, but there wasn't one there. It was weird when I came home. 
went straight to the knife collection and began fondling all these collectible pieces. So anyway, I'm rambling. Guys, thanks for uh, stopping in and checking out this video. This is the McGinnis Horton Shorty 45. Just freaking awesome. I love this knife. If you guys ever can score one or um, at least play with them, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Probably one of the best EDCs out there. A knife that is custom made, that's tough enough to carry. You won't feel bad about using. It's just that good, good of a quality piece. So, again, thanks for stopping in. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I try, literally, try to answer each and every single comment, and um, throw up a like if you dig this vid, and uh, subscribe if you want more. If you subscribe, it'll automatically no, uh, notify you when a new video is posted. But I think pretty much I'm sticking to that Saturday afternoon upload. So. Anyway, see you guys on the next vid. Thanks, thanks again for stopping in. Take it easy.